Hello, hockey fans. Welcome to the Minnesota Hockey Connection. I'm Kenny Gallagher, along with Jerry Burrow, and we're back for the, wow, the 2017-18 season of hockey. I'm losing track. Is this our seventh season? All right. At least seven. Somewhere in there. Yeah. <laughs> we've been doing this for a while. A few yeah, years. we've been having a few games. First show of the new hockey season, 2017. Well, today is October 2nd, 2017. And uh, like I was telling Jerry, uh, like I do every episode, I got nothing. So I hope he's got something. <laughs> I don't have much, at least. Well, um, I've been to about 100 games already, so. Since our last taping? Yes. Scrimmages in the summer. 100 games. I'll say it the again. Show, the showcase. I saw over 40 nobody, games that week. Nobody sees more hockey in the state of Minnesota <laughs> than this guy right here. And that's a fact. It is. So, well, what do you got here? What uh, what type of things? Well, let's start out with UMD. They played their first uh, game. And what didn't count for the record or anything, but... Uh, you know, if I recall last season, and these have been fast and furious these seasons. Maybe it was the season previous, but they lost that exhibition opener to Lakehead University. I think it was last year. And they went on and made it to the championship game. You can't really look into this, but they lost to the uh, University of Alberta. And uh, I don't know, what do you take out of that? The Bulldogs played three different goaltenders. Plus, uh, Alberta was a better team than some of these Canadian colleges. So I thought uh, they played a good game. But like you say, three goalies, everyone played a period, 10 freshmen, I mean, UMD lost a lot of scoring from last year. They sure did. I mean, uh, let's see in the stats right here. They lost Ayafala. They lost Adam Johnson early. They lost Nia, Neil, Neil Piak. Went to the Rangers. And Dominic. He's playing Dominic Toninato. Yep. Osterberg. Yeah, Kuhn well, did. I mean, I mean we lost Peterson, a lot of scoring. Uh, Carson Soucy. Now, Carson Soucy, he went to, did he go to Iowa? Nope. Oh, Susie. Yes, yeah, he, he did. did. Yes, yeah. he did. But he lasted up until the final cut. Well, here's a story on him. They like him. He played good. And uh, when there's the, an injury, Carson Susie's yes. the call up. Yes, yeah, they like his feistiness. Yeah. He likes. He doesn't do a lot of you know like this guy is a star you know, but he does stuff that they like. Yeah. And he's a big boy. Yeah. And they'll bring him up. He can hit. And he's from a town with the name Viking. Oh, jeez. <laughs> hope they play better than... <laughs> Viking, Albert, is he an Alberta kid? Saskatchewan? I can't remember what uh, province. But, uh, you know, again, the Bulldogs uh, had that opening series with the University of Alberta, and they lost. But let's talk goaltending, because we know that uh, in the last two seasons, uh, the Bulldogs, that's kind of been their strong point, is goaltenders that really came into the season... Not really knowing. Freshman right. Kaskasuo, freshman uh, last year Miska. Who's the freshman this year that's going to step up? Well, it's not it? a freshman. There's two sophomores, and I think one of those two will take over the job after, you know, Sandlin switches them off in the beginning of the season. Okay, so uh, <coughs> you're talking uh, uh, Nick, Nick Deary. Yep, I think he's the leader. Right uh, now. Lacrosse, Wisconsin kid uh, played at Steinbach in the MJHL, whatever that is. <coughs> and Hunter Shepard, the Cohasset uh, sophomore. Uh, and then you've got uh, Ben Pat, the freshman from uh, Ontario. Right. And I thought, uh, I don't know. I mean, Shepard got a little lucky, but he didn't lull any goals. Deary, his shot, the shot that scored, I mean, he, I don't think anyone could have saved it. And uh, the freshman, he had a couple problems in that. But, uh, hey, they're young, no experience, and time will tell yeah. which one is going to show up. Well, the, we know that the goaltending situation is still up in the air at UMD. And, um, but what about up front where the, all this scoring was lost? Boy, um, that's going to be tough. Yeah. Who's going to score? Tuft. Tufty. Did you say Riley Tufty? Okay. Is he the guy that maybe... Uh... I think he'll be the lead scorer. Really? Yes, I think he he's stronger. He'll be doing more things. And the problem with that, let's say he does have a good year. If he has a good year, he's gone too. 
Well, let's uh, anticipate who else might have a good year. Hermantown kid Dylan Sandberg scored the first goal of the season. Granted, it's exhibition. But is this a, 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 is, is this what we can see from this kid uh, for the rest of the season? I Let's say this. An offensive All these young ability. defensemen, it's going to take them time. It's going to be growing pains. I mean, there's going to be a lot of mistakes made. But they got to. This is what they have, so they got to stick with these kids, and sooner or later they're going to build confidence, and they'll get better and better as the season goes on. But at first, you'll be shaking your head a few times each game. <laughs> Former Unity Bulldog uh, goalie uh, uh, Brent Nicklin is a volunteer goalie coach, and I love the quote out of the News Tribune, where Sandlin and I, I'm paraphrasing something to the effect I told Brent. Uh, you know, don't do so well with these kids or something because he's produced yeah. two NHL goalies right. in the past couple of seasons. Um, Brent Nicklin was a great goaltender here right. for the Bulldogs, and uh, he's working with these young guys, and it's working. <coughs> yeah. Um, let's see. I hope he keeps it up, though. Yeah. I don't care. I mean, if the person leaves, they can have a good season. No. You need the foundation. Sure, and sure. Goaltending is where it's at. Uh, Captain uh, Carson Kuhlman, uh, Esco kid, uh, senior this year. Uh, right. Another good 200-foot uh, uh, player. You know, he's like uh, Tananato, you know, where he can go both ways, where he'll go the full length of the ice. He'll work hard every shift. He, I mean, he's going to be the leader of the team, you know. He might not be the scorer of the team, but he'll be the leader of the team. You know, you look at this senior class, and I got to tell you, I'm not that familiar with these names. Nick McCormick. Yeah, Elk River. Blake Clint. Young. <laughs> Where is he from? I think it was Canada, wasn't it? Uh, Blake Battleford, uh, Saskatchewan. Yep. Uh, senior Avery Peterson. No, he. Right. I thought he left. No, Adam Johnson did. The only ones that Adam, left okay. early is Nia Pionk, Miska. Um, and, Avery uh, was a pick of the wild. Right. And they show him as in the system. Oh, he always goes to the preseason camp and all that. So that's what I was looking yeah. at. Uh, right. the, and looking at seniors, uh, uh, who else do we have here? Uh, Sammy Spirell. Right. He didn't play too much the other night. Jared so, Thomas from Hermantown. There, there is a player that has to pick it up. I mean, I've been waiting for him for... <laughs> Three years now. Yeah. This is his senior year already. Unbelievable. But he's the one that has to put the puck in the net. Well, it's not unusual for uh, college players to, you know, have uh, maybe three silent seasons, if you will, and then their senior year might be their breakout season. Hey, let's hope that's the case yeah. with Jared Thomas. Right. But, you know, looking at this, these freshmen, they're going to have to – these are the guys that are going to have to, I don't want to say carry the team, but keep this team in competition. Right. Because this senior class is, it's not as strong as past senior classes. I think the number 23, Nick Sweeney from Lakeville South, I think he'll be, by the second part of the season, he'll, he'll put some pucks in the net. Mm -hmm. And uh, this transfer from uh, Alaska, he, um, Peter Krager, Krager, he played at St. Thomas Academy. And I think... Uh, He's a tough kid in that, and I think uh, he'll play, get a lot of time, and I think he'll get some points too. Hmm. So those are two players I see where it'll come through on the young kids. Well, Peter, he's a transfer, so he's not really that young. Uh, the UNB Bulldogs uh, started their season with an exhibition loss to University of Alberta at uh, Amsoil Arena. They will play... In uh, October 6th, they're going to host Minnesota, and then October 7th, they're going to host Michigan Tech and Union. Yeah, the winner of that game. They're all up here in the, the icebreaker. Ice now, what is the icebreaker tournament? It's just a tournament they started a few years back, and it's just... A few years back? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. And so, um, yeah, but we got Minnesota, and we've had their number for a few years now. Sure have. But I've, I'm telling you one thing. Minnesota, Minnesota is deep. They got some offensive players that can put the puck in, and I think uh, UMD is going to have a hard time with them this weekend. Oh, really? Yeah. So it'd be uh, to me, it'd be an upset. 
And wow. I'm really, I'm kind of surprised at uh, the rankings in the USCHO where they got the Bulldogs, uh, what do they have them, fifth or sixth in the rankings? And I thought, holy cow, they must be going by last year's players or something. I mean, runners up, national championship. Yeah, but game. you can't go by that. You have to go what they have on their team. I agree. I, I think they're going to be fighting to get in the top 16 myself. Mm. That's just my opinion. Yeah. And um, it's going to take them a while to uh, get these freshmen, you know, to get their confidence and because they're going to make a lot of mistakes. It's going to be growing pains on this team. But I think it can be a very good team by the end of the year. Now, do these games in this uh, icebreaker, I mean, they count in the standings, but they're not uh, they're non-conference games. Right. So the first non-conference uh, games that we have coming up. Uh, but these are non-conference teams, too, though, so all the teams. Yeah, at Bemidji State, Merrimack, at Maine, St. Cloud State. So we're looking at November 3rd right. until uh, NCHC competition. That's at St. Cloud. The Bulldogs will host their first NCHC uh, weekend against Western Michigan November 10th and 11th. Um, well, this is interesting because, again, last year, uh, you know, they were on the doorstep of winning the national championship. Denver was just... Uh, a goal better in that game, or was it right? A, was it a was it a one goal game? Yeah, we came back yeah. and um, yeah. we came to the end. Then we took control of the puck. The last, I mean, Denver was just holding on. Then, but looking at the senior class from last year, I think it's going to be tough for the Bulldogs. Top sixteen, we'll see, but uh, it's going to be a little different uh, season. But I think the league in the in whole in the whole is going to be very good. Denver got almost all their top players back. They lost uh, Will Butcher. Yeah. I mean. Uh, well, let's look. And we've got more hockey to get to. The Minnesota Wild, uh, their exhibition season ended well. Uh, they beat Dallas. Uh, Eric Stahl had two goals in that game. I just have a tough time looking at uh, exhibition games, preseason games of the NHL, and right. trying to take anything from that. There. Right. Uh, but the Wild will start their season at Detroit. Actually, their first two games are on the road, if I right. think. Right. Uh, First three. First three, okay. Yep. Yeah. We got uh, Detroit on thurs Thursday. October 5th. Then uh, on Saturday, we got at Carolina. And then that's uh, October 7th. And then uh, next, the, the Thursday after, October 12th, we're at Chicago. And then uh, we open at home on Saturday the 14th. Against Columbus. Why in the world would the NHL do this at the start of the season? Schedule a, a game on Saturday and then not have them play again till Thursday. I don't know. It's this weird scheduling that has been the last few years. All you right. Don't try to understand it. <laughs> well, let's talk about the Wild for a little bit here. Yeah. Uh, Zach Parisi. What's what's the deal with Zach? How, how old is he? Is he? Uh... He's thirty-three years old. Okay. Here's the age of the forwards that we're going to have in there. We brought Matt Cullen back, and I, I said a long time ago that we should never left him. He should have stayed on this team. For a million dollars, you could have kept him. Well, then he wouldn't have gotten a Stanley Cup with Pittsburgh two. last year. He got two in a row. Oh, okay, there you go. So, <laughs> so he's, he's happy he yeah, left. Yes, he's got two rings. And, <laughs> and he's probably happy he's back now because yeah. he's got the hardware. Right. Okay. 40 years old. Yeah. Boy, that's young. He's almost 41. He'll be 41 in a couple yeah, of months, I think. That's young to you and I, but in hockey, yeah. 40s pretty I'll old. take his age. <laughs> yeah. So Matt Cullen, 40. Okay, they brought in, these are the new players they brought in. They got uh, Tyler Ennis. He's 28 years old. Joel Erickson Eck, he played a few games last year, but I think this guy is the real deal, and I think he'll really help the team this year. I think he's matured enough now that he'll get all the playing time he needs. Then they brought in the. Oh, he's twenty years old. Yeah, he's young, but uh, they were thinking of bringing him in when he was eighteen. Mm -hmm. But he, he's a heck of a player. But then they brought in a trade from uh, Buffalo, where they got the big boy, six three, two hundred twenty eight pounds, Marcus uh, Fel Feligno. Yep. And he's a big boy, so 20, he's going to hit. 26 years and old. And we got rid of, I mean, we lost uh, Pominville, yeah. Jason, and we lost Scandella. You know, but uh, hey, you got to move on. 
Then um, this kid's young. He played at Wisconsin. Luke Coonan. Yeah. And he was a good player at Wisconsin. Is it I Cunnan? Think. Cunnan? Maybe it's Cunnan. Yeah, I think it's Cunnan. Okay. He was sent down to Iowa. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, I mean, you got to put these young players in now because a lot of these other players, Koivu and uh, Stahl and Stewart and Parisi, they're getting old. So we lost some key players. We lost Eric Kala to the new franchise, Las Vegas Golden Knights. Oh, yeah. And then Palmanville, like I said, went to uh, to Buffalo, back to Buffalo. That's his original poem. And then we lost Jordan Schrader. He was a good skater, good, fun local boy. Yep. And he's down, I think, in Columbus. And then um, the two guys that we got in the trade from Arizona, uh, we it was too much money to keep them. So Martin Hansel and uh, Ryan White, we lost them. And then there's some kids that that came up and down all season, game here, game there, that uh, we'll see. So Parisi's 33, Eric Stahl's 33, Chris Stewart's 30, Captain Koivu is 34. And Koivu just got an extra two years on his last year, so he'll be here until 2020. How old is uh, oh, Granlin? Is he? Uh, 25. 25 years old. Now, the goaltenders, Devin Dubnik and uh, former Bulldog, yeah. St. Pa Paul native, yeah. Alex Stalock is yep. the backup. Yep. That's pretty cool. One of their best forwards. No. <laughs> that guy, that kid, uh, I'm amazed how he uses his hands and that stick and move that puck out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I remember at, um, when he um, was first at UMD, they tried to stop him doing that, and all of a sudden... Why stop something that's so good at? Yeah. You know, he moves the puck out. That's what you're supposed to do. Get the puck out of the zone. Get it going the sure, other way. Sure, sure. And he was great at it, and he hardly ever made a mistake. You've got to be surprised by that, though. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of young goaltenders on this on this team. Right. Well, he's getting up there in age, too. He's in. Uh, he has to be in his 30s, too. Round 30. So, we'll see. He's a backup, and um, we'll see what happens. If uh, Dubnik went down, I mean, he's going to get a lot of playing time, but how much playing time does he get otherwise? You yeah. Know? And one every five games, maybe? or mm -hmm. So we'll see. And it's hard. I think it's hard for being a backup to come in, not playing any games. Then all of a sudden you have to perform. And if you play a couple bad games, they can bring in another <laughs> backup easily. So... Dominic Toninato, a uh, senior last year at UMD, uh, drafted by the Toronto Maple Leafs. But that didn't work out, and then he became a free agent and signed with Colorado, and there he is on their roster, um, the Dominic Toninato. But they dropped him down to the, their San Antonio What team. happened with this Toronto thing with him? Um, at one time, when he first got uh, drafted, when he was an 18-year-old, Toronto needed centers. They didn't have anyone. They had a couple older guys that n they knew. They didn't have any centers, really. Yeah. All of a sudden, the next three years, they got Austin Matthew. They got all these young kids they brought in. Before you know it, they got too many centers. So when uh, they had a, their last chance of signing him before he can become a free agent was, um, I think, July 31st. Well, his agent was Sheehy. Yeah, or and is they, she? He and I thought and they told they only wanted to give him a, a minor league contract, Toronto. Okay, so he didn't want that. No, he'd be a free agent and find the team that's even better for him, better chance of making it. And Colorado, they have problems. Yeah, the last two years they haven't played good. Mm -hmm. So his chance of making it, I mean, he's not going to be a first or second liner. Yeah, his style doesn't fit that. But a third or fourth line, fourth line for sure. Mm -hmm. But maybe even a third line because he does the 200 feet both ways and good defensively. He's a bigger boy. He can hit. I mean, there's a lot of stuff he does. Penalty kill. There's a lot of stuff he can do. So I think he's going to play some games in the National Hockey League. The grass is still green. There's the leaves on the tree still. But here we are talking hockey, our first show of the season. Uh, what else, Jer? Uh, what about well, look at all the players that left early. I think all of them been dropped down to the American Hockey League now. We got Pionk up in uh, New York Rangers. We got Adam Johnson at Pittsburgh. We got uh, 
Pionk didn't make the squad. No. Oh, I thought for sure where that dipsy doodle play yeah. from the in the overtime game winner would well, have solidified a spot. You know spot what's so for funny him. about that? You want to play the guy. Yeah. And if you can't play him, you got to send him down to play because he's not going to develop at all. Yeah. He's still a rookie. Yeah. So that play where yeah. he did a spinorama, that was uh, Brock Nelson. Yeah. Brock was watching him. Yeah. Like he was watching a yes. game on TV. And I <laughs> saw that play and I thought, he's made the team. Yeah. He's on the Rangers team. But and the they, fans loved him right away. Oh, that's too bad. So he got sent down. Huh? Yeah. All right. And then uh, all, that, the, all the other players. That blows all that momentum. Adam Johnson scored a couple goals during uh, preseason, and he was sent down. Yeah. But I think there's another, there's a lot of opportunity for these kids. So I hope they get back up there, and I'm sure they will. Well, you got to admire what Pittsburgh does. and how they, they seem to draft so well. And, uh, you know, granted, somehow they can find these free agents, too. True. So that's another thing. I, Pittsburgh, some teams just have the knack, you know. It's like the Chicago Blackhawks. How in the heck can they lose key players every year because they do so good? And all of a sudden, boom, they're right back in it. You think they can't afford this team no, no more. They're going to drop about three players. Well, it must be those key players, those Patrick Kane's and those mm. Jonathan Tays. And then Pittsburgh, you got Malkin and... Uh, right. The kids, the kids. So yeah. it really is that core, isn't it? I yeah. Think. yeah, it's just amazing. Yeah, I guess uh, we're still waiting. What <laughs> about youth hockey? Any youth hockey news? Well, we're going to get all the new coaches in the area on our program. We got uh, Smalley moving from Duluth Danfield to Cloquet. Huge and, move. And then we got, we'll bring back, like every year, Mike Randolph at Duluth East, which is going to be one or two in almost every poll when they start the season. They're, well, they're let, deep. Let's stop right there. I've been hearing things about this Duluth East hockey team. Are some of the things I'm hearing uh, accurate? And what's the things you're hearing? Oh, gosh, I'm hearing they're going to be very good. Yes. And maybe is... the best class ever. It's possible deepest. Really? I think uh, it can be the deepest class they have ever had. I think there's been better. Because you know, you hear that best ever, and I hearken back. But here's the thing to the to the time when there was a guy named Spihar and Locker. Right. But they weren't as deep. So this this class, I mean, he uh, you can get injuries even and have players replace them that can fit right in. Well, what you and they got ten kids on the elite league. But Edina is going to be just as deep, if not deeper. Okay. So it's going to, the two best teams are going to be those two and Moorhead. They're in the state tournament championship game again. Yeah. They always get second place. You know that. Well. And, uh, but they all their key players are coming back. So Moorhead, those are the three teams in the beginning of the year. Edina, East, Duluth East, and Moorhead. And then St. Thomas Academy and Tonka will round out the top five. Uh, let's uh, keep it closer to home. Hermantown uh, head coach uh, Bruce Plant uh, steps down. Yep. New head coach is in place. Right. What's the scouting report at Hermantown? Well, they lost a lot of key players, but they still got some key players. And but it's going to be a different coach. Yeah. How does it? You got to wait and see. Different and philosophy. They're not, and they're not as strong as they have been. And that's happened and under Plant. Got, and they and they got a tougher schedule now than they ever have. They're playing a lot of double A teams, so we'll see. Time will tell. That I mean they got some key players, but I don't know if they they're deep enough. Yeah. To play these double A teams. How about Duluth Marshall? Anything? Duluth about- Marshall is a very good team. They can compete with anyone, but if they get any key injuries, they're going to have problems. They're not deep. That's going to be their problem, and we still don't know about their goaltending. There's no Pauls left? No. <laughs> oh, well. Can't they make a couple? <laughs> They've gone through the, the list of uh, goaltenders with the last name Paul. Yeah. Uh, Denfelt, uh, who's the head coach there again? Uh, the old UMD defensive man. Dale Jago. Yeah. Yeah. Jago. We'll have him on. Yep. Good. We'll get good. him on. Yeah. We're going to get all these coaches on. I already talked to Smalley and Randolph. They're going to be coming on. And Flaherty always comes on. Yeah. And we'll try... Uh, Hermantown coach is a teacher, 
So we'll see about him. But what about Cloquet? Uh, Kyle Smalley leaves Denfeld, gets an opportunity up there. Dave Essie stepped down. What's the status on Essie? Is he anywhere? Is he going to stay in hockey? or is he He's out? not in. He's just out right now. Out of hockey. But you never know. I think he'll miss the game. His uh, daughter's still going to be coaching the high school girls team out there. All right. But um, I see Dave getting back in it somewhere, somehow. Yeah. Because he's a... Uh, I, I always liked him. Mm -hmm. he, he always made teams better. He is that blue collar worker, you know. His teams are always ready at playoff time. You, you can have the better team, but it's not going to be an easy game. Yeah. yeah. Well, the season's just getting started. Uh, the Minnesota Wild preseason wrapped up. They'll play their first regular season game uh, Thursday, October 5th at Detroit. And then they'll travel to Carolina and Chicago. And they'll open the uh, home season uh, against Columbus on October 14th. That's a Saturday. And then uh, the Wilderness. What about the Wilderness? What well, they finally won their first game. Did they? They went to the showcase and they played four games and lost all four. But probably the one that hurt the most was that fourth loss. And they played uh, Kenai River. And so happened the coach is Josh Petrich was an assistant coach at the wilderness. For the wilderness. Oh, wow. So he's out there. And they haven't won a game until that time either. So that probably hurt more than anything. But they finally won a game Saturday, 4-2. to two. And I think the team will get better because uh, USHL will be dropping a lot of their players from their rosters. And the North American League will pick a lot of these players up. And there's going to be a lot of good players out of that list. Okay. So, and they'll get some fits that they need yeah and plus uh, ash altman a duluth east former duluth east player is uh was hurt and he'll start um, uh, about the first week of this month probably of the second week oh i so, can't believe we're back in the saddle it seems like we didn't leave that oh, another ago. thing is uh, the, the elite league uh, the best uh, players in the state of minnesota will be up in duluth on october 21st and 22nd and uh, they're going to be at Mars Arena in Saha. And so they'll have all eight teams. And, I mean, Shattuck will be up here. I mean, that's a good time. Plus, UMD plays that night. They're, they're playing uh, Merrimack. And then uh, the Lady Bulldogs will be playing the Gophers up here, too, in the afternoon. Oh, so on, all on that same weekend? Yes. What's so that weekend again? The 21st, 22nd. Uh, wow. It'll be, the, it'll be the 20th and 21st for the college games. And 21st, 22nd, Saturday and Sunday yeah. for the Elite League. So All right. that'll be a great weekend for hockey and the get started and get it in your blood. we got to wrap it up. Uh, your, the hockey's in your blood. we got this thing going. Uh, yep. we're Wild start, the regular season for the Bulldogs, Gophers. Uh, the Elite League is halfway through already. we got to go. Okay. Uh, check us out at minnesotahockeyconnection.com. Find us on Facebook and like us. Thank you to the staff at PAC TV where this show is produced. And uh, we'll be back here next week, same time, same channel. We'll see you then.